Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Ant Keeper, where I upload videos twice a week about all things ant related. If you find yourself enjoying this video, please subscribe. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it. Whether you have just started ant keeping or you have been ant keeping for years, at some point you're going to check up on your ants as you normally do in your normal routine, only to find one of your queen ants have died. When it happens, it sucks. And you wonder to yourself, what went wrong? And honestly, it may not have been your fault at all. Sometimes ants just die, especially during the founding stage. Think of it as like it's the curveball mother nature throws at us. However, there are steps you can take to give your queen ant the best chance of survival. Here are six tips to keep your queen ant alive. First, we need to focus on hygiene. Ants are very clean creatures and for good reason. Mold and dangerous bacteria can harbor inside the test tube setup. Sometimes you can see the cotton inside the test tube change to all sorts of different colors, from black to purple or even green. I personally have experienced a mold outbreak in my very first queen ant that I bought. Luckily, I was able to move them into a new test tube before I had any more casualties. Sadly though, I did lose one worker. So remember, always wash your hands with warm soapy water before working with your ants. The second tip is gonna seem kind of like a silly one, but it's very easy to overlook. And you're gonna think, yeah, we know that. But when using a test tube setup, make sure the cotton isn't too tight. Otherwise your queen ant could suffocate, especially if you have a colostral queen that you're planning on putting in a dark box for maybe a month. You go check up on her and she's on the back simply because she didn't have enough air to breathe. So just make sure when you're working out your setup, that both your ants can breathe, but you don't want to make too much of a hole that she can escape. So there's a balance to be had there. Your ants need water to both drink and create a humid environment to flourish and grow. Without it, they'll simply dry up and die. If your test tube setup is running low on water, you can use a syringe to inject more water in it. If you don't know how to make a test tube setup, watch my video, How to Raise a Queen Ant, to find out how. Is your queen ant colostral or semi-colostral? If she is semi-colostral, she'll need food throughout the founding stage. Correct identification is key here. Feed your semi-colostral queen ant sugars and protein. Just make sure to clean up after your queen has eaten. Otherwise, uneaten food could cause a serious mold outbreak, like we mentioned before. I've made a video covering this entire subject called How to Raise a Colostral and Semi-Colostral Queen Ant. Again, if you haven't seen that one, I'll leave both the link for that video and the video I mentioned before in the description below. Check it out if you haven't already seen it. The next tip really varies depending on what type of queen ant you have and where in the world you live. Keeping your queen ant in an ideal temperature will encourage growth and maybe even rapid growth if added correctly. As a rule of thumb, keeping your ants in a room that doesn't fluctuate in temperature is best. You can add a heat mat or a heat cord to speed up the growth of the founding stage. Just make sure you do it gradually as individual queens will react differently to the heat. Now I've said this before and I'll say it again, the hardest part that I find with keeping ants is not disturbing them. So what I've done recently is I've started buying these red box setups so I can watch my ants without stressing them out too much. They're great because ants can't really see red light so they don't even know you're there. If you check up on your queen ant too often, you could be stressing her out. If she gets too stressed, she could stop laying or even eat her own brood. Also, vibrations can cause stress to a queen ant. Keeping your queen ant somewhere that's away from vibrations is ideal, especially during the founding stage. It's also worth mentioning, when you inspect your test tube setups, if you place them on a flat surface, be careful that they don't roll around. Now, my last tip is patience. It's well known that ant keeping teaches you to be patient. As an old friend used to say to me, enjoy the journey, not just the destination. This has certainly been true of ant keeping. Sometimes, even if you follow all of these tips, a queen ant dies unexpectedly with no explanation. If this has happened to you, don't give up. Rather, take this as an opportunity to learn about how you can do things different in the future and move on. With patience, greater things will come. If you've made it this far into the video, please subscribe if you haven't already. It really makes my day. I love seeing more people join in on the ant keeping community. I would love to know from you, what has been your favorite queen ant or colony that you have owned? Please answer in the comment section below. 
Thank you guys and I'll see you on the next video. Until then, happy ant keeping.